Okay, so we know all these things. Um, we have our handy dandy little diagram here. And we know that the final velocity is what? Zero. It's coming to a stop. So we can get rid of that. So now we can take this and this, and they're both equal to W, so we can set them equal to one another. So F D cosine theta equals negative one half MVI squared. What we want to know is distance. Do we have everything else we need? We have mass, we have velocity. Um, do we have the force? How do we get the force? We can solve for it. So we know that this is the force of friction, and it would be kinetic friction if I want to be technical, which I suppose I should. Select. Do that. Get rid of that. Okay, so we know that the force of kinetic friction, well, we know that mu k equals fk over fn. Make the, yeah, no, fn. <laughs> we know that because the sum of forces on the y equals zero equals normal force minus force of gravity, we know that fn equals mg. Do we have what we need to find FK? Yeah. So we know, this is all that background work and it's all those silly little steps that you know how to do and you've done, but it's nice to have a little refresher of how we can walk through and apply those things. So we then know that mu K FN equals FK, mu K MG equals FK. We have an expression now for that. How do you know that that's FK? Well, because that is the only force acting on the object. Oh, it's a great question. So um, if, you, if you did a full free body diagram on this thing, it's been kicked or pushed or whatever. Once it is kicked or pushed, once I push that chair, is the force that initiated the kick still acting on it? No, it's just got momentum, so it continues to move. So the only force acting on the x-axis now is friction. It's got normal force and it's got gravitational force, but... Yeah, and you can, you know, to, to answer that for yourself, you probably should do the free body diagram to identify all the forces that are potentially in play. Okay, so that gives us mu k mg d cosine theta equals negative one-half mvi squared. What are we solving for? Okay. So, the question is re related to sum of forces. This is, this is that whole sort of new thought process that we talked about in Chapter 4 where I've been doing it as actual sum of forces, Fn plus Fg. G is, is negative 9.81. And the way the book handles it probably, I will admit now, is superior. And we make G 9.81 and we call Fg a negative Fg. So it's Fn minus Fg. Basically what we're saying is that the magnitude of the gravitational force is equal to the magnitude of the normal force. Okay, we've got this, we're solving for D. Okay, not so hideous as it could be. Would it matter if we didn't have the mass of the sled? No, because masses cancel. So we have D equals, and I'm going to change that one half on the numerator to a two in the denominator, negative VI squared over two mu K G cosine 180. That is how far it mm -mm. Theta is 180 because the work that's being done, or the force that's being the motion of the object is forward, the force of friction is backwards, so the angle between them is 180. Basically that cosine theta really ends up, um, if you're just going to break out your forces independently, cosine theta generally ends up being cosine of either 0 or 180. Okay. 
times 2 times 0.1 gesundheit times 9.81 times cosine of 180. Be careful with a couple of things here. So be careful with your signs. That is the negative of 2.2 squared, not negative 2.2 squared. You just had that conversation. I thought so. Um, and we've got that cosine 180 on the bottom, so we're going to have a negative number divided by a negative number. Our distance is going to be positive. Is that consistent with your expectations? Yeah, because this thing is moving in the opposite direction of the force that is acting on it. So what do we get? We get... Um, <laughs> okay, I get a raw answer of 2.46. Hey, yay, we got it right. Um, the book, actually, their sig figs are wrong as usual. So they say it's 2.4. Of course, we know it would be 2.5 meters. So this thing goes 2.5 meters before it comes to a stop. Um, this is fantastic for problems where you don't know the acceleration of the object. You don't need to know the acceleration of the object. You can look at its kinetic energy and the forces acting on it, and you can bypass acceleration altogether. Basically, with, with that um, FD cosine theta, any time that the, the force is being applied opposite the direction of motion, you're going to have that negative 1 in there. Yes, ma'am. The units cancel. Let me put units in, and we'll look at that. Okay, so we've got meters squared over seconds squared divided by meters per second squared. We end up with meters. And, uh, of course, mu is unitless, cosine 180 is unitless. Good? Okay. Um, the 5C practice problems, all assigned. That is number 1 through 5 on page 176.